Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CCT, Certified Zentangle Teacher. Welcome to Not Perfect Zen and day 27 of the Inktober Tangles for 2021. I will be using a Micron 01, a graphite pencil, and a blending stump. And <clears throat> excuse me, today's pattern is Trilina. I've also heard it pronounced Trilina. Um, not sure, but it's by Any e. Oaken, CZT. She has a really cool website that has lots of um, great classes, and she has an art club. Um, very, very talented artist. But uh, this is her pattern, and it's it's really easy. When I first tried it, um, I didn't do it very well, <laughs> but uh, I just practiced a few times, and then it, it just clicked, and I was able to uh, figure out how to do it, and I think it's, it's an easy pattern. And this is the basic pattern. And then this was one that I thought I would try to do a little bit different and it definitely came out different, but um, just have fun with it. That's what I do. What if I do this or what if I try that? How is it gonna look? And um, again, practice on just scrap paper. And then once you figure it out, then do it on your good tiles. This is a four inch by four and a half inch tile that I put into my uh, disc bound system. And so I'm gonna show you several that uh, I enjoyed playing with, but I'll do the basic one first. Okay, so she starts with an orb and she leaves like a little sparkle at the top. And then we're gonna put like uh, sixes going around. So a little bit of a curve at the top and then come down. And then we're gonna do that four times. And you can do even more than this if you want five or six, but uh, I like the four. And I'm trying to make them about the same size, but it's okay if they're not exactly even. Okay, so once you have your four beginner sides of the petals, um, I guess that's what we'll call those. <laughs> then we're gonna bring some lines from this point. Okay. And I go over here again until I get to the end of that one. Okay. And then I'm gonna start doing kind of an anchored aura here that comes back down to that point. And then I'm just gonna keep coming back a little bit at a time and come back to this side. It ends up kind of lining up. So see, I keep just moving up. Starting again, making it smaller until we get to the end. Okay, so let's do it again on this one. Again, I'm going to start here at the top of that six, and I'm going to add one, two. Three till it comes back around here. 
I'm going to go ahead and bring these around to meet. Just kind of fill that in. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did here. These auras. I'm going to come back down to here. And each time I'm moving back a little bit here and then bringing it down until it meets this part. And like I say, you just keep letting it get smaller. <clears throat> So here we go again, one, two, three, and then start adding these other auras. Once you practice a couple of times, this one gets easy to do. And I think it's fun to play with it. Okay. <clears throat> so here's where that first one was. One, two, three. And now I'm going to start putting those auras again. Oh, made that one kind of big. <clears throat> okay, so that is the basic pattern. And I'm going to do another one close to it. Let me back out just a little bit now. So I'm going to do another orb to start with. And then I'm going to do my six. I'm going to do this one a little bit of a different angle. And it's just easier for me to turn my tile to do each of these little sixes. Or I guess you could call it a, a C, an elong, elongated C. Okay. Now I'm going to start making these R's that come down to this line. And then once I meet up with this one, I'm going to start moving it back a little bit, bringing it around. Okay. Same thing here. One. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be just these three stripes, but this is how I've been practicing it. And that's how Annie did hers. Okay. and just keep doing the same thing. They build up pretty fast. And then I'm filling in that little space right there. <clears throat> okay. 
And this one's going to go off the page. Okay, so there's two. They so said they go pretty fast <clears throat> once you figure it out. Let's do this one this way. I always <laughs> stop my lines too soon. It's one of my bad habits. I need to watch where I'm going and stop worrying about what I'm going to do next. Hard to believe this is day 27. Wow, I've done a video almost every day for over three weeks. It is quite a challenge for me and I always learn a lot when I do it. So I think I made this one pretty big on this side. <laughs> I seriously rarely get things exactly the same, but they're still fine. I think I do want to challenge myself to do more patterns after uh, October is finished. Find new ideas um, and try to at least do one or two videos per week, but no promises. Okay, I'm gonna do a small one. I still have grandkids that I babysit, but thankfully they're in school. But I've also got scrapbooks that I really need to finish. And that's a lot of work. <laughs> I love how these come together kind of fast. Once you figure it out, once it clicks, they come together fast. Let's see. I didn't make that meet.
So there's one, two, three, and then they start getting smaller. Once I figured that part out, it made it easier. The one, two, three. Then it starts the little ears. <laughs> So now I'm going to show you some ideas that I came up with on these. Um, finish connecting this one. This is where I'm saying I have a bad habit of not making my lines go to where they need to be. Okay. And um, this one, I'm going to bring a line down the center of each of these. This is what I was doing this morning. I, once I figured out how to draw them, I came up with several ideas of how to add a little bit of variety. And it, uh, it makes it fun to play, what if? What if I add this? What if I try that? The thing I'm not good at is figuring out colors. That's why normally I prefer to put a lot of color down on a tile and then just tangle on top of the color. Okay, so that's the first idea that I had. Um, this one, I'm gonna add a little bit of striping with a sparkle in the center. Okay, I think my pen is running out, but I'm gonna keep flipping it. Just turn it a little bit and try a different size and sometimes that helps. These would be pretty in different colors. I've loved so many of the tiles that people have shown on social media in some awesome colors. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do that on these other sides. Skip one. Skip. Okay, no. I like to start at the line and pull it toward me when doing this kind of hatching.
This reminds me of when I first learned about Zentangle and I kept finding more and more new patterns to try and I wasn't necessarily posting much on social media. So I spent most of my time just enjoying the fact that I was learning new patterns. And then I started finding more of the Facebook groups And that's when I admittedly got intimidated because there were so many fantastic artists out there that did amazing work. And then I was forgetting the joy that I had of just doing his entangled tile because I love the fact that I can follow a pattern. So doing this for Inktober reminds me of that time and of just learning and thoroughly enjoying just drawing and not worrying. When I let go of trying to compare, it's just so much better. And there's a quote that says, comparison is the thief of joy. So true. Anyway, I'll quit preaching. Wasn't trying to preach, just saying. <laughs> I have really enjoyed doing this. Okay, so there's some striping. And then the other idea I had was to just add some weighting. Just where we put those first stripes. Bring this down a little bit. <laughs> okay, one more. All right, so there's the basic pattern, striping, weighting, and then just adding a little detail in there. And now we'll do the shading and the shading will be basically the same on all these. So I'm gonna add a little bit of heavy graphite where these lines meet up. Okay, I'm going to do that on all of these. And for the most part, right in here, I'm trying to stay between where I added the um, waiting. Do the same thing here.
All right, now with my blending stump. Actually, I've got the wrong one. Okay. I have one that I used for my pastel colors, and I had picked that one up. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that down a little bit. And then with what I have left on my blending stump, I'm going to put some right inside here to kind of match up where I have those sparkles. So pull it down a little bit and then add a little bit here. Yeah, I may come back with another pen and fill that in a little better. I have so many um, Micron 01s that I have started using. And then um, I think I need to put like washi tape or something on the end of one and just keep using the same one instead of having several that uh, are partly used. That's what I end up with, just a lot of partly used O ones. Okay. Now I'm gonna come back with my O one and redefine this line. Okay, since that would be the darkest part where everything is going under. And sometimes we kind of lose that line when we've added the graphite. Okay, and like I said, I'll come back with another pen and make that look better. Because I wanted it filled in a little bit better up here at the top. Okay. This one. Okay, so I'm pulling it down just a little bit right here. And then with what's still on my blending stump, I'm adding a little bit of shading on each side. Gives it a rounded effect. Reminds me of pillows that I've had in the past. Especially after you add the shading. Okay. I'm gonna redefine these lines again. Okay. So just continue to soften these and add some shading along the edges. A 
when I started looking for other people who had done this pattern, I didn't realize this one's about at least five years old. There were videos that were five years old. There are so many patterns out there that I still haven't discovered. And that's the one of the fun things about Zentangle is that there's so much to learn and play with. Okay, I'm gonna redefine my lines again. And when I do that, I'm able to also make sure that on the places where I didn't bring my original line all the way up to the top, that I can uh, fix that a little bit. Okay. Last one. And you could, no, I'll go ahead and do that on this biggest one, add a little bit of graphite on each of these edges. And if you did these center things in a different color, that would be nice also. But I decided when I was doing this, the videos that I would just do them in monotangle, which is just one pattern and just one color, well, black and white. But I'm looking forward to uh, playing with these patterns that I've learned and uh, make some tiles after all these videos are finished. So again, here, I'm going to darken this, redefine it. I'm going to redefine these dots. And then if I've gotten graphite on this center orb, then I like to uh, go over that again also, redefine it. All right, that was fun. I really enjoyed that one. Like I said, once I figured out what I was doing, I really enjoyed it. And I hope I uh, made it easier for you also. That's always my goal. I've always been one to try to find the easier way to do something. And it's not that I found an easier way on this one, but uh, and I just finally figured it out. Kept practicing. I like this one. I like it a lot. Okay, so that again is Trelina by Any Oaken. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you'll join me again for uh, the next few days of Inktober. Be safe, be well, 
don't forget to hit the like button and come back tomorrow. I'll see you next time. Bye.